So now looking at these more difficult cases, if we want to use that product rule, we have to have products involved. So right now we don't have two quantities being multiplied. We've got a big long trinomial. So we can factor that into products, then use our little rule at the end, the, zero, the principle of zero products. So how do we want to start factoring this guy? Think back to those rules that we've talked about. I've got positives everywhere and a one out on the front. So automatically I know it's going to factor into x and x. And we can't forget that it is an equation. So we need to keep tagging along, equaling whatever's there. So in this case, we need to break up 6 into factors multiplying to 6, adding to 5. And we know they're both going to be positive since I've got a positive when I add and a positive when I multiply. So we need 2 and 3. Order doesn't matter. We could flip them around. And now we have a product. Two things being multiplied is equal to 0. So what does that tell us? Either the first piece is equal to 0, which gives us an x value of negative 2. Or what else? The second piece is equal to 0, which gives us the value x being negative 3. So my solution set in this case is negative 2 or negative 3. And if you aren't certain, what can you do? Plug it back into the beginning, check and make sure that it holds true. For part B, what do you notice about this guy? In all the cases that we've seen before, it's been equal to 0. But right now I have it equal to negative 16. But I need that to be 0, so what can we do with that negative 16? We can add him to the other side get x squared minus 8x plus 16 equaling 0. Now we can work towards um, that principle of zero products. So, get everything on one side, have it set equal to 0. That's always our first step. Now we want to factor. So I've got a coefficient 1 on the front. I know it's going to be an x and an x. And when I add I need it to be negative. When I multiply, I need it to be positive. So that's going to tell me I need a negative and a negative. And this is one of our special cases. What do we need? I want to break up 16 into things that multiply to 16, add to negative 8. I need negative 4 and negative 4. It's a perfect square trinomial. But even if we can't notice that, we can still factor as normal. So what does that mean? Now I have a product of two quantities, b and equal to 0. So either the first chunk is equal to 0. That gives us x equals 4. Or the second one is equal to 0, but that's the exact same. So we're still getting out that same answer of 4. So my solution set never has repeats. Only that one quantity, 4, will make it true. And again, what should you do in the end? Plug it back into the original, check and make sure that it makes it true. So go ahead and take the next two, solve those. First one, everything is already on one side, equal to zero, so we can factor. There's a one out on the front, so we know it's going to be an x and an x. And we've got negative negative, so we need some combination of negative and positive. So we need to break up negative 6 into things that multiply here add to negative 1. So we need ones that are close together. And which one needs to be positive, which one needs to be negative. The bigger one needs to be negative so that when we add it, we get to our middle term. Order doesn't matter here. And now we have quantity times quantity is 0. So either that first piece is 0, meaning that x is 3, or the second piece is equal to 0, which tells us x is negative 2. So our solution set for this guy, negative 2 or 3. We can plug in either of those, and we should to check to make sure that we make our original equation true. For part b, what has to happen first? 
we need everything on one side, so we need to move 28 over. So we get x squared minus 3x minus 28 equal to 0. Now we want to look at factoring. So it's not a perfect square trinomial, and I've got a 1 out on the front. We know it's going to be an x and an x. And I've got negative, negative. So I need a combination of negative and the positive. I need it to multiply to give me negative 28, and to give me negative 3. So what combo are we looking at? 7 and 4 together, some combination will get us here. Which sign needs to be negative? The larger one, so that when we add it, we get a negative number. So again, this order doesn't matter. And now we have a product. Two things being multiplied is equal to zero. Either the first chunk is, which gives us the value x equal to seven, or the second chunk, which gives us x is negative four. So our solution set in the end here contains negative four and seven. And we can plug into the original, check and make sure that it makes this equation true. All right, let's see some harder cases now. We've got the basics down. Looking at this first problem, what do we need to do first? Everything is on one side, it's set equal to zero, so that's great. But if we start to factor, I have a negative out on the front of this term. We haven't really dealt with that case, so what can I do to alter this equation? At the very beginning, on the left-hand side, I can factor out a negative. When I do that, all of these signs are going to change. So we get 5x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Okay, it would be the same as if I just took every single term and added it to the other side. We get this quantity here. And in reality, what can I do with that negative? If I wanted to move to the other side, we can divide everything by negative 1. In reality, there's a 1 out there. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. What is 0 divided by negative 1? 0. So we're looking at 5x squared minus 2x minus 3 is 0. So in reality, in the very beginning, if I want this to be positive, what could I do? Instead of factoring out a negative and dealing with all of this, can literally take every single term, move it to the other side. Because if I take negative 5x squared and add it, I get it here. If I take net, er, 2x to move it to the other side, I need to subtract it. To move 3 to the other side, I need to subtract it. And now we can handle it with a positive coefficient on the front of x squared. So let's start factoring. 5 and 3 are both prime. So we won't have to guess and check too many options to get us to the correct solution. So I'm looking for a small number in the middle. So if I put 3 here, then I'm multiplying 5 by 3 and I'm getting 15. That's really big. So I should put my 3 in the other place and 1 here. So I get 5 and 3. Some combination will give me 2. And we need the larger combo to be negative. So I need my power of 5 to be negative and my power of 3 to be positive. So what does that tell us about our options for x? Let's start solving. Either the first chunk is equal to 0, which gives us what value? We'll start solving. Subtract 3, divide by 5. x is negative 3 fifths. Or, x minus 1 is equal to 0, which gives us x equal to 1. So in that case, our solution set contains, I can write it below, I ran out of room, negative 3 fifths and positive 1. We can always plug those back in and make sure that we come out to the correct um, answer and we actually make the equation true. All right, looking at B, I need to move 5 to the other side because I want everything on one side having it set equal to 0. If 
I subtract si 5 from both sides, what a tongue twister, we get here. But I have a product and a difference on that side, and I need everything to be a product over here. I need two chunks being multiplied in two chunks only. So what do we have to do? We have to FOIL this guy out and then refactor and solve. So when we FOIL, what is this going to come out to be? I've got the same exact terms in the same exact places, but I'm differing by a sign. So that should tell me it's a difference of squares. x squared minus 4 when we FOIL out this quantity. And we can't forget that we're subtracting 5 on the end of that. So in reality, we're looking at x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. And now, since everything is on one side and it's equal to 0, and we only have sums and differences, we can factor. And I've got a binomial that tells me, first question should be, is it a difference of squares? And it is, so how is it going to factor? x plus 3, x minus 3 being equal to 0. So what does that tell me for my x values? Either x is going to be negative 3 or positive 3. If I take my first chunk, set it equal to 0, x has to be negative 3. If I take the second chunk, set that one equal to 0, x has to be positive 3. So we need everything on one side, having it set equal to 0. We want the term on x squared to be positive. And we can't have any extra parentheses or products on that side. We need to have it start out as a plain polynomial to be able to factor. So go ahead and take the next two. Give them a try. Factor and see what you get for your answer. So in part A, we need everything on one side, having it set equal to 0. So we'll subtract 16. We don't have any funny products to take care of. So we need to look, how can I factor this? I've got a binomial and a difference. So it's a difference of squares. I've got 3x and 4, 3x minus 4. As we take each chunk and set it equal to 0, what values for x did you get? If I take the first one, set it equal to 0, I get 3x is negative 4. So x is negative 4 thirds. And what's going to be different about that one? It's going to be different by sign. So our solution set is negative 4 thirds, positive 4 thirds. And we can always check in the end. Plug it back into our original, original equation. Not something that we've worked with, because we might have made a mistake. Check in the original. Make sure that each of those satisfy the equation. And for part B, what did we have to do? get everything on one side, and we also have to get rid of these parentheses. So as I FOIL this out, it's going to be a difference of squares. So I've got x squared minus 1, and I need to subtract 8. Move 8 over to that side as well. We can combine those. And how does it factor? Two terms. Subtraction, perfect squares. Difference of squares. So what does that mean for our x values? You've already seen those. I can either plug in negative 3 or positive 3 and satisfy our equation in the beginning.